How's everybody doing? So, bear with me here because I'm still trying to get used to the whole microphone thing, doing the videos on my laptop as opposed to uh, my iPhone videos. Um, but today, short and sweet, straight to the point, I wanna go over how I go about using BPC-157 uh, when it comes to lagging injuries, whether it's tendonitis, jumper's knee, whether it's uh, my shoulder recovering or my pec tears. Um, I'm gonna go over how you can uh, go about mixing the BPC powder with uh, your bacterial solution, as well as you know dosage dependent, what you're looking for, how you how you would go about measuring that in a uh, insulin syringe, as well as how I go about uh, injection location. So, first things first, I'm gonna want some hydrogen peroxide or isopropyl. Um, gotta stay clean, don't want to catch an infection. So both of these are currently unopened. This is the bacterial water solution. This is a combo of TB500 and BPC157, both of which in theory should be regenerating the uh, tendon and ligament tissue. It's got five milligrams of each peptide, uh, just clarified, non-steroidal. So your body naturally produces both of those. Uh, these are just synthetic forms. So first thing I'm gonna do, peel off the blue cap. Pretty easy stuff. If you have like a cotton ball or a swab, you always wanna make sure to wipe the top. And you're gonna do that each time you use. There you go, so nice and clean. I'd also recommend wiping the injection site that you plan on using. Good. All, right. All right, so there we go. Nice and clean, ready to go. This is what a typical ins insulin syringe is gonna look like. So this one is one mil milliliter per cc. Um, so a good way to think about this is first thing I want to do is I'm going to fill up the peptide vial, which as you can see is in a powdered form, but we want to turn that into a liquid solution. So the first thing I'm going to do, take the cap off, small needle here, see how it goes from 10 to 100, 100 being one full milliliter, right? I'll go into dosage wise, how you can break that apart. For me personally, I use 500 micrograms, which is gonna come out to the 0 0.10 mark. So take this, I wanna put it in on a slight angle into my bacteria water solution. Nice and easy. And give it a gentle pull. I'm pulling on an angle so it doesn't fill up too much with uh, an air pocket. And I wanna fill this right up to that 100 unit mark. You can shoot some air back in if you've got an air pocket and then nice and slow repull. Boom, tilt back, there it is. One milliliter of solution here, super simple. I wanna put this in at a slight angle, right? I don't wanna go directly above, there we go. And I'm gonna press very lightly. Right, you should just see the syringe naturally going down on its own because of the water pressure. It's nice easy. I would not recommend shaking this up and down vertically. Give it a little spin, right, to break up the uh, solvent. And there we go, this is what it's looking like now. 
So that's how you turn the BPC or whatever peptide you're using from a powdered form into a solution. Rule number two, never reusing these needles. Doesn't matter if you're only pulling 0 0.1, 0 0.001, just get another needle, uh, just for health and safety. Quite frankly, that's pretty nasty if you uh, got a penny pinch on needles. All right, so that being said, I have another one ready to go. These are super cheap on Amazon, by the way. I think I paid 20 bucks for a box of uh, 500 insulin syringes. So here, peel the cap open, boom. So if I were to want to inject 500 micrograms, right? One milligram would be all the way down to the 100 unit, which would mean I would get five shots out of that, right? So pulling it down to the 0 0.10 mark is gonna give me 10 doses, so over the course of 10 days. Personally, I'll usually get 10 milligrams up front and then I'll use twice a day. So if I wanna pull, again, I'm gonna come in on an angle. Boom, right there. Good. And now nice and easy, I'm gonna flip it upside down. And give it a little pull. You wanna pull slow here. So you don't overshoot, you don't get any air pockets. But if you do overshoot, you can always just shoot it back into the vial. And boom, there it is. So technically that's 0 0.11, but good enough for now. All right, so if I don't wanna inject this immediately, I'm just gonna put a cap on it. Now it's all set to go. Typically I'm putting this in the fridge and then I'm injecting it at night. Both of these have to stay refrigerated, right? Do not leave them out in room temperature. Also don't put them in a freezer. And if I were to inject for me personally, I wanna go right on the quad and then just underneath into my calf. So I wanna inject not intramuscularly but into the skin. So what that would look like is I'm gonna come in at a 45 to 60 degree angle right here. I would recommend peeling the skin a little bit so it's nice and taut. Either way, I'll be honest, it'll feel a little uncomfortable initially, but that's just because of the pressure of the buildup of the fluid underneath the skin. That's gonna last maybe three, four seconds, right? So don't be alarmed. If you feel a slight burning sensation, Literally all it is is just pressure, right? Because it's not going intravenously. One, two, I try to get it for me personally close to the meniscus, but not in a super sensitive spot. So there you go. Maybe next time I'll make a video of how I go about injecting, like if I had tennis elbow or ice shoulder or something along those lines, but now you have it, BPC-157 and TB-500. Uh, I swear by these, I've been able to really skate through some gnarly injuries, uh, especially in the latter end of my 20s, um, with these, through consistent use and doing my own research and having fun with it. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Be safe. I'm not a doctor, you know, just speaking from experience.